Hello and welcome to this month's Heart of the Matter, brought to you by Mayo Clinic and the SADS Foundation, the Sudden Arrhythmia Death Syndromes Foundation. I'm Dr. Michael Ackerman, and I'm the director of Mayo Clinic's Long QT Syndrome Clinic and the Winless Smith Rice Sudden Death Genomics Laboratory, and I'm the president of the SADS Foundation. This month's Heart of the Matter question is asking, what does the warning sign faint look like? What about fainting after a long QT syndrome diagnosis? Thank you very much for this question. This is actually one of the most important questions and that we wrestle with when we are evaluating a family for possible long QT syndrome and hearing the story of their fainting spell. As many of you know, the most common first symptom that a patient with long QT syndrome can have is a sudden faint followed by waking up. Now that faint, the faint of long QT syndrome, that is the result of the long QT heart spinning electrically out of control, is a very, very different faint than the ordinary faint that many, many people can have. So the long QT faint, or the faint that should prompt concern, is the faint that happens with hardly any warning, sudden, out of the blue, often triggered by exercise or activity or an adrenaline rush, the thrill of victory, the agony of defeat, or an auditory startle. But in that type of a setting where the person suddenly goes down, usually after that they wake back up 10, 15, 20 seconds later and they are quickly, quickly back to normal. That's in stark contrast to the what I call the vanilla faint that almost 25% of us will experience at least one vanilla faint, one ordinary vasovagal faint by their 25th birthday. I had mine when I was about 13 years old. That ordinary faint is more of the dizzies, the woozies, the lightheadedness, where the person is not feeling right. They know something's wrong. They know something's happening to them. They may not have eaten that morning. They may not have slept right. They may have been standing uh, for a long period of time in a choir practice or something like that. And then they become overcome with a sensation of unwellness, feeling lightheaded, feeling dizzy, having their hearing changing, having things blacking out on them, and then saying, you know, I probably should do something about this. I'm not feeling well. Maybe I should go to the bathroom. Maybe I should sit down. Maybe I should change my position. In other words, they're having an awareness of a problem that's lasting for seconds, 10, 20, 30 seconds or longer. And then sometimes it culminates in a full faint where they actually collapse, lose body control and lose consciousness for a short period of time and then they too spontaneously recover and get back up again. And unlike the long QT faint where you're quickly back to normal, when you have one of those ordinary faints, you are often kind of washed out for the rest of the day or for a period of time rather than just seconds. So two very different faints that a physician and a family need to carefully dis discuss and dissect to decide how concerned are we about the nature of that spell. Now what's important also besides the long QT warning faint from the ordinary vanilla faint is we have to remember long QT syndrome families and physicians who take care of long QT syndrome families that a person with long QT syndrome is also allowed to have the ordinary vanilla faint. So if a long QT patient faints in that ordinary sounding way, that does not have to result in and should not result in the five star alarm uh, of getting concerned that that person just had a long QT spell for which they now have to get more aggressive therapy like an implantable defibrillator. So we don't want to be putting in implantable defibrillators in a long QT patient who has an ordinary faint. Thank you for that question. I hope this discussion has helped us separate and distinguish some of the features between the long QT warning faint and the so-called ordinary vanilla faint. And this is Michael Ackerman and I look forward 
to being back with you next month. Have a good day.